Chris here. This is the next installment in our mini-series on steel guitar jazz. In our last lesson, we took a look at Don Helms, the steel guitarist for Hank Williams. In this one, we're going to be looking at the guitarist, Roy Buchanan, and how he appropriated some steel guitar ideas um, easily accessible on the guitar. And really quick to kind of get into your playing. They're pretty simple, but they're really effective and they, and they bring that sound right out. So if you're just now joining us in lesson two, uh, there is a link in the description below that will send you to a page where you can purchase all of the music that goes with this course, which will be written in tab and standard notation in PDF form with all the chords labeled, correct fingerings, and the examples covered. So please check that out as after this lesson, we have two more lessons looking at Buddy Emmons and Red Volkart, and then one little supplementary bonus lesson looking at the very famous uh, Roy Buchanan intro on Hey Good Lookin' and taking some ideas from that. So with all that said, let's look at the stuff for today. We're going to be looking at some basic seventh voicings. Now, this is new to you. I do have a, another mini lesson series. Um, that is all about Barney Kessel and um, big band chord changes and how he kind of took some of those. And I'll put that in the link below. Um, that kind of is going to bring more of this out and kind of take it further in ways as well. So you can check that out if you want some further studying for that. Um, but in this one, we're going to be in the key of C. We're going to be using that cheat and heart kind of uh, chord progression as our example. And if we're looking on the PDF, we're just going to take this basic C triad right here. E, G, and C, right? It's part of your open C chord. And we're going to make it a seventh chord. So now we're going to make E, and then G up to B flat, and then C. So we have this basic C7, right? Most everyone should know that one. And then we're going to add an extension to it. So we're going to make the C on the second string come up to the D, the 9. So that's what's happening there if you want to be able to switch between the two, which is a great steel sound. But also we can just do it like this with the bar. That will allow us to grab the G on the top string. So we have a C9 with the G there. And if we use our pinky, we've got a C13 now with the added A. And there's all sorts of different altered things you can do within that, but that's our base. We've got C, C7, C9, C with the G on top, C13, all right? And that's just a movable shape. We can do that right here on F. So this is our F triad, the four chord and your cheat and heart progression. We've got F7, F9, F9 with the fifth on top, with the 13, we take that up a whole step. Let's go backwards. We have G9, or excuse me, G13, G9 with the fifth on top, G9, G7, G, and we're now into our C chord right here, which will be the next one on the, the chart. So we've got C triad right here, C, E, G, and we drop it down a whole step, and we have now a C7, B flat, E, G. Then we're going to add the 9 on the first string. So we take this C up to a D, right? And then if we want the 13 in there, we add the G up to an A. So now we have options. We've got C, C7, C9, C13, and then with both included, okay? And let's do that on each one. So we have F chord, the four chord, F7, F9, F13, and then both right there, and then we'll take it up a whole step. Right? G with both, and we have just a G13, G9, G7, G. So pretty simple, just moving those around. Um, and those are the two main shapes we'll be using. Now to kind of make this a little more interesting, instead of just playing with the, the chords themselves and with the notes you can add or subtract, uh, we can move these around in half steps. So a really common thing Roy Buchanan would do uh, is just do that. He would take like, if you have a C9 here in this next little half step approach, it would be like one. Right, where you're combining it. So if we're going like one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, right? Where you're just sliding into the C, 
you're playing the note on top, coming back down, coming down and approaching. So you get this kind of enclosure around the G note, right? That's what's happening there. So you just have, you know, fun and experiment with different ideas. Right, go above it. And you try it right here on their top one, right? Right? So you just kind of experiment with what you can do with the extensions and what you can do with moving the chord and, and move around both. Right, so that's the gist of it. Um, from there, we can do a whole step approach. Uh, so we're now just taking it a whole step into it. So this one would become or you're just moving it up a whole step. Same thing here. So pretty, pretty simple. And then we can reverse that. We can take it down. And that's acting like kind of what we were talking about in the last lesson of doing just like a, a one chord to the flat seven. That's the same thing. You don't have to like think, oh, C, B7, B flat seven, none of that. Just think C to C7, you're just moving it down a whole step. That's what's how, uh, that's how it's functioning there. Okay, so that's, that's the basic idea. You've got the half step approach, the whole step approach, and then the reverse with those seventh chords. So we're just gonna like put it through the paces a little bit and you can see how we can combine some of the things from last week with just the double stops um, and the sixth chords with the stuff from this week. And then I'm throwing a few things that we'll be covering in the future weeks. So I'll play it a little slower than the intro. Um, just trying some ideas out for you. So one, two, three, four, one, two. So try messing around with some of those ideas. Um, one last thing is when you're playing these, you don't always have to be dead on the beat, right? Part of this, and I talk about this a lot in my lead playing in courses, part of this is um, seeing how you can extend the time over bar lines. So in some of that, I wasn't just switching right on the beat. I was letting it go maybe a beat, a beat and a half, and then delaying that resolution. And that is a really nice kind of effective way in your playing. Um, to make it more interesting and not feel like it's just mechanical. If you listen closely to, to the guys we've been talking about and the ones we'll talk about in the future, as well as other steel guitarists and, and just good players in general, you'll hear that, that they're not always changing right on the beat. So especially with these chords and how they're moving very close in half steps, you can really kind of articulate that and get away with a lot of cool ideas of delaying that resolution and then bringing it to completion with the resolution. So try those ideas, uh, stay tuned for this little supplementary lesson talking about Roy Buchanan and Hey Good Looking, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.